Marcus Stevenson Jr. here, giving you a personal invitation to join us each and every Sunday morning right here at our beautiful church. We're located at 2659 Pike Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. We see great prophetic signs, wonders, miracles, Friend, I'm telling you, the gifts of the Spirit are in full operation each and every one of our services. And every Sunday morning, I'm ministering a word from the Lord. Don't miss what God is doing in this season. Join us for more information. You see the number on the screen. Call us for clear directions. Ecclesiastics 12. I'm going to start at verse number 13. Somebody say, an equal God. Uh, come on, say it if you don't mind opening your mouth. Say, an equal God. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now, here's the, um, uh, the wise writer Solomon right here in the book of Ecclesiastes saying, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And that's just good by itself, especially in relationships. Because sometimes we cut people off before they even finish making the point they're trying to make. And we wonder why there's always arguments and bickering and things taking place. But you can't take a few words or something or take a few things or something and judge the whole thing. He said, let us hear the conclusion, the finality of this thing. And this is something we got to take in part for the whole scriptures. I'm sorry, for the whole Bible, for all the scriptures in the Bible. The whole purpose of hearing the word of God, the whole purpose of receiving the word of God, the whole purpose of salvation, of saying you're saved, of saying I've been redeemed from sin. This is the conclusion of the whole matter, that we should fear God, respect him. Tell your neighbor, put some respect back on God's name. And keep his commandments. And there's a whole lot of people who have forgot this is the conclusion of the matter. This is what all this is about. I don't come to church to entertain you. I don't come to church to make you feel good. I know we like to say I want to encourage somebody. But a lot of times we're encouraging people in wrong and in, and in wicked doing. But it's about you fearing God, respecting God, reverencing God. And a lot of people have lost honor for God. And one sure way you lost honor for God is when you lose honor for his servants. When you lose honor for the people he put in charge and the people he told us to follow their vision. And there's a lot of people who've been deceived right now. I've been seeing it for years. And it's been heartbreaking to me. It's been grievous to me. Because sometimes people have a spirit of saying, I'm spiritual. The Lord spoke to me this morning and said, people are trying to be spiritual while they're being disobedient. And how are you being led by the spirit into disobedience? That's because of lack of fear of God. No, oh, I know it ain't going to make you shout, but it'll make you think. So we're supposed to fear God. But the true sign of reverence and respect is when we keep his commandments. Now, why do we do this? For this is the whole duty. Come on, talk to yourself. Say, this is my job. This is the whole duty of man. One thing I realize when I get hired somewhere, they hired me to do a job. They hired me to provide a service. And I don't care how many people on that job site are not doing what they're supposed to do. I'm required to do what I'm supposed to do. And we see this this day and age even in life. We see it outside of the church. We see it in the church. We see it in our everyday life. We always talk about who's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. But never let that sway you, nor steal your focus, nor keep your attention, and especially your accountability out of your own self of knowing that I still have a requirement that God requires out of me. And my job is to do my job. Never think because Father is not around to help the children that you are going to be of great help by you stop being a good mother. Now I'm going to think because others, brothers in the church, are not fulfilling their calling, that it's going to be okay for you not to fulfill your calling. And I've been seeing this for years. I see people put themselves on the same level as other people. We see them not fully obeying. We see them not doing what they're supposed to do. And then as soon as somebody correct you or try to correct you, now you didn't put yourself with well, other people. Who told you to grade yourself on the curve? Nowhere does the Bible tell me to grade myself on the curve. He told me to try the spirit to see whether it be of God. And if there's a spirit that's not of God and it's resting in me, then have me know God want me to get rid of that spirit. 
Because if it's not a God, it's going to hinder God's work. It's going to hinder the job that God requires me to do. Amen? Amen? So the whole conclusion of the matter, the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God. So this is our job, to reference and to respect God and to keep his commandments quiet in the building. For this is the whole duty. Now, if his whole is complete, you are, have not completed your God-given assignment when you have not completed obeyed what God asked you to do. That's why a lot of people get in trouble. So we come to church and look at me like I'm an alien. I'm the same person you saw a month ago. The gospel ain't changed. I ain't changing the Bible ain't. Now I may have changed my font up on my iPad, but it's still the same words. God requires obedience. And it's sad when people have been in church for years and you can't fully trust them. Oh, you can trust me? No, I can't if you ain't fully obedient. No one can trust you fully when you won't fully obey. And we've heard these things for years. And there's a lot of preachers up this morning tickling people ears, saying what they want to hear. But a lot of times we need to hear that God requires obedience out of me. He requires me to perform my duty. When Paul was knocked over by the light that shined and fell off his high beast, he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? God did not appear to him because of Paul doing something so great. Your performance is not what got you saved. But after you have an encounter with God, there's something God's requiring you to do. This is where people get it messed up at. I'm not working for salvation, so I have my so-called elders trying to tell me off. But let me be the preacher today. You're not working for salvation. But once you get saved, you better go to work. You didn't work to get that job. But once you got it, you better clock in. Oh, talk to the rev here. So he said, fear God. Reverence, do you respect God today? Oh, man. I respect the Lord. I fear God. How can you respect anything and you won't obey it? I see it in my own life. I see it in other areas of my life, and I especially see it in church. Love you, man of God. I respect you. I honor my man and woman of God. You know how we do. Because you quiet. I honor them. I just thank God for them. And sometimes the least of things sometimes go undone because of the lack of fear that we have in our spirit towards God. Amen? Oh, I ain't going to beg you to listen. I just want to give you what God gave me. For this is the whole duty of man. Luke 17, verse 7. There is no other message other than the message of Christ Jesus. Jesus came to save the whole world. But why is the world not saved? Because the world did not receive him. But to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. When there's a reception of what God is saying, now you are empowered. And a lot of times people are not empowered like they need to be because they spend half their time with some half-drawn excuse of rejecting what God is saying. Jesus said it like this. If you climb up another way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. Oftentimes, we're trying to go contrary, and we're trying to oppose and go into an opposite direction than what the Word of God is telling us to do. You can pray all you want to, but many times we're praying on top of disobedience. And sometimes we try to pray for other people, and we know in our heart, I ain't fully obeying myself. You're trying to pray God's will be done in their life, and you haven't even completely done God's will. And it's the small foxes that destroys the vine. And I don't care who we are, where we come from. You can stand up here, you can preach, and, and get everybody else excited about doing something for God. God still requires us to do our duty. Amen? He still requires righteousness out of us. What's well, the worst thing you see about even the police officers and the law enforcement agencies? People start getting grieved because they feel like they're trying to keep us in line, and some of them crooked this out. And I tell you right now, you better be careful because this phone's everywhere. Do some crazy you want to. Man, you'll be on social media faster than social media was. You'll be there quicker than lightning like you're talking about with Superman. Because people said, no, I have a record of your foolishness. God has a record of every time you've been asked to do something. Oh, I know it's quiet now. Every time you've been begged and pleaded to do it, that thing. God has a record to say, why come you won't obey me and do your duty? Now, I know you were trying to rebuke me and say, he wiped the plate clean. Yes, he wiped it clean. The problem is you put dirt back on it. 
He said we'll return back to our own vomit. That's a true proverb. And sometimes God has cleansed us and washed us, but we go right back into that same thing. And oftentimes we make it like somebody hasn't forgiven us. And sometimes you put it on elders and leaders where, you know, I told Pat, I told Pat that I was sorry. Yeah, but you went back and did the same thing the next week. When God pulls us out, he wants us to stay out. Amen? Some of y'all have businesses. Who wants to hire somebody in your business? And they do their duty this week. And next week they don't do their duty. First thing you're going to do is you're going to probably give them a warning. Then if they keep doing it, you might fire them. And it don't matter how they put your name out as evil, you still feel within yourself, I did you no wrong because of your lack of doing your duty. Amen? God does us no wrong when he judges us according to what we do in our own body. If you're constantly lying, he calls you a liar. If you're constantly being rebellious, he calls you a rebel. If you're constantly being slowful, he calls you slowful. God has never lied on you. But one thing there is about it is that whatever you are, you can say, God, I want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth, and I want to see a change take place in my life. Did not Jesus say, except you be converted? That word converted means change, altered. And become like little children. You'll know why it's in the end. The problem is not God. The problem is we don't want to change. The problem is I want to repent with my mouth, but I don't want to repent with my actions. I want to say, God, I'm sorry. I want to acknowledge my sins with my lips, but my heart is still far from following God. Because out of the heart come the issues of life. So now when certain people show up, we really can't enjoy service like we're supposed to. And you put it on them. Every time they preach, I just don't feel it. You don't feel it because they were equipped upon you like an itsy bitsy spider. And you want somebody to pity pat that old feeling. But well, you got the wrong preacher, the wrong day, and the wrong service. Because God's requiring us to do our duties again. And I hate to be seen like mean preacher. I don't care if we don't like it. Because the Holy Spirit told me to cry loud and spread out again. And to lift up my voice like a trumpet. Because this is why churches are dying. Many of us should be at a greater level, at a greater place. But you'll head down half the service. You can't really give God praise for something. And it's because the weight of sin. But when are you going to grow up and say, uh-uh, no way, devil. I'm not going to walk into this weight no more in my life. I'm not going to try to rebuke the devil by slaying oil. I'm going to rebuke him by being obedient to that assignment. Well, I don't think that's Bible. Well, stop thinking. Let's just read it. The Bible said, have a readiness of mind to revenge all disobedience. Not when you slaying oil. When your obedience is fulfilled. And a lot of times we try to rebuke the devil, and he's somewhere laughing and said, I ain't going nowhere because you won't obey me out. You're trying to speak me out, but you won't obey me out. Hallelujah. Anybody mad but the devil? Watch verse 7 here. And equal God. Now, but which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle? Now, I want you to see this. This is in your Bible. Somebody say, I'm with you, preach. Oh, thank you for the fear you there. He said, which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field? Now, somebody say servant. servant. Now, a servant is one who is supposed to serve. Come on. That's, right. That's why we're supposed to be servants of the Lord. People who serve. Not people who talk about serving. But people who serve. Thank you. I found some help here. So he's saying, which of you having a servant? Having somebody who is supposed to serve, which of you have a servant that's plowing or feeding cattle that you're going to say unto that servant, by and by, when he has come from the field? Which of you going to say, go and sit down to meet? Are you with me? Follow me here in the word. And will not rather say unto him, make ready where I ooh, may sup. So what he's saying is, if you got a servant there, and that servant's supposed to be serving, uh, which one of you have a servant that's supposed to be plowing and dealing with cattle, and you're going to tell him, buy and buy it, and tell him to go and get himself some food? He said, no, you're not going to do that. Because if that servant is there, he's there to serve. He's not there to eat off the blessing. He's there to serve you. 
Oh, it's quiet in the building. Because this is the spirit on church folks right now. It's God, what can you do for me? But it's nowhere about God, what can I do for you? So Jesus said, just put yourself in my shoes. I feel my help coming here now. He said, wait a minute here. If you got to serve, are you going to tell your servant because he did some of what he was supposed to do? Because he was in the field and around with the cattle? You're going to tell him, all right, that's good enough. You didn't complete the job, but that's good enough. Come on in and get some food. No, you're going to tell him, yeah, we're going in, but you ain't stopped serving because we came in. See, this is the problem. We think I'm in the Father's house, and we hear this stuff at funerals about there's many mansions. So you think your job is to kick back, you know, kick back and relax and just sit around and enjoy the mansion. But Paul is saying just because you're in the mansion don't mean you should stop serving. I didn't anoint you to be slow for I know why the devil don't like me. I didn't anoint you to sit around and give orders uh, and you yourself will obey my commands. Yeah. Can I preach some Bible here? We can neighbor say it's tight, but it's right. Can I preach some Bible? You just follow me a word for you talk about. But watch this. He said, which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field and say, go sit down to meet. He said, and will not rather say unto him. He said, what you really going to say to the boy is, make ready where I may eat some supper. And curb thyself. Wait a minute. You're going to tell him, keep yourself prepared. And that's why Jesus is saying the same thing to us. Just because you've obeyed in some areas, don't give you the right to let down your guard. You know sometimes people that do half of what they ask, or almost everything what they ask, and the first thing the devil will tell you, like somebody else is evil because your heart ain't fully right. Folks just don't appreciate nothing you do. Wait a minute here. I don't appreciate when I get almost all my check. <laughs> Quiet in the building. I don't appreciate when I get half my birthday cake. I don't even care if I don't get the smallest slice. I want all of it to be there. I ain't blowing candles on the half a cake. And this is how we do God. And we have this old self-centered, selfish spirit. Just stay right there. I'm going to work on that thing for a while. Because the Holy Spirit has been speaking. See, we can come and play religious looks all we want to. Look around look deep. But let's just try with the word. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, son, there's a self-centered spirit now that's hidden churches across America where people are caught up in themselves. And even when they do something, they want some great reward as if I owe them something. I ain't rushing today. I got a few more minutes. You thought you was out right now. Now, we got a little time today. Oh, we're going to work on it. Watch this. He said, you're going to say, make ready where I may suck. You're going to tell them to curl itself. And what else you going to say? And serve me. This sometimes is disappointing to us. Because we, make, we get phrases from the world and we bring that foolishness in the church. And yes, I, I'm not trying to sound tough and rough, but it's foolishness. Ain't nothing never good enough. Now what I do is I always something. Well, I'm getting some looks out there. And the devil will trick you out of your blessing. Because truth be told, it is always something. It's always something God's asking you to do. Just because you won 10 souls last week don't mean God wants 10 more souls to be lost. Just because you praise God last service don't mean this service is okay for you not to praise him. Just because you finally preach your little message don't mean it's it and over. You are a preacher of the gospel. And he told me to preach and be instant in season and out of season. You can't put your little Bible up and fold up your little tablet because it was hard. You better get yourself back out there, open your mouth, and keep on preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I've had service that people look down my throat. In other services, you can almost wave your hand. Everybody followed the anointing. But thank God I went to all of them. I don't care what kind of service. I was in it. Because God commanded me to be there. You are not stopped being a lawyer because you lost some cases. You haven't stopped being a student because you may have flunked some tests. 
you get back up and you keep going. And this is the problem we have in the church realm. We think because I've served so good in these areas that now I'm not a servant. Like I can kick back and relax. No, that's what the devil wants. He wants you to get at ease in Zion. Preach, Brother Stevens. He said, you, you would rather say to him, make ready. You know saying? Just because you came out of the field and you was, you was plowing and feeding cattle, it ain't time to go in there and do nothing. Just because just, just, just depreciation is over with. I mean, just because he was in the field. Just, uh, you, you finally got online. You've been asked 55 years. You finally did it. But, but... Okay. He said, serve me. Wait a minute, watch this. Till I have eaten. See, sometimes when you fight in a selfish spirit, the devil tell you somebody else selfish. It's quiet in the building. But he said, I ain't worried about you eating right now. You do it until I didn't get full. You do it until I got everything I need. And this is what we don't understand about God. God is never satisfied with almost everything he wants. He's only satisfied when you give him everything he's asking for. We see this truth as King Solomon deals with two ladies and they have a child and they come to him and both of them are saying the child is mine. Then the other one is saying, no, the child is mine. King Solomon, being a wise man, told them, cut the child in half. Those two women represent the two type of churches. One church that has the real love of God and another church who has falsehood, false care, false love. Notice the one church, I mean the one woman. She said, don't cut the child because if I got half the child and she got half the child, then half of what I got is dead and half of what she got is dead. And what good is having some of it if it ain't going to do me no good because it's dead. But listen to the real church. I mean the other woman. She said, I would rather she take the baby. Because the baby ain't no good when it's dead. What good is having all this knowledge when it's dead inside? What good is having half the word of God? Half the presence of God? And somebody said, how can you get half? Ain't no such thing as half. Uh, wrong again. Judas received part of a ministry. Sometimes we receive part of what God wants us to receive. But you ought to tell the devil, I'm going to be like David. Fill my cup. Don't just fill my cup. Fill it up to an overflow. Till people around me catch a hold of this disease I call get up. Until they get this disease I call determination. Until they get this disease I call doing God's will. Fill my cup. This is why you need to hang around men and women of God who got a vision and stop going to these cold, dead, dry churches because they're giving out free hot dogs and Kool-Aid. They feeding you while you're going to hell. Look at me crazy. Hell still exists. And that's the problem we ain't talk about in church no more. You say that full of a tick ain't doing nothing, ain't learning nothing, ain't trying to grow in God. You just go there because your kids like their hot dogs. Maybe I'll buy you a hot dog if it'll save your soul. Yeah. Let me know when next time you're coming. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now back to my point here. Y'all can get me mad. He said, you're going to tell him to get stuff ready that I can eat. And when I have eaten and drunken, and, and, <laughs> and afterward, thou shalt eat and drink. What do you say? He said, after you tell him that, you're going to eat and you drink, right? So after you tell him to get this ready, you're not just going to tell him to get it ready. You're going to do those things. But now watch verse 9. Do it he thanked that servant because he did the things that were what? Ooh, are you with me? I want you to see this now. How do you think about that? He said, are you supposed to be kissing his feet because he did what he was commanded to do? You're supposed to be giving them some, you know, you say, you want a cookie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you remember that? Yeah. Oh, Pastor, I've been pressing. You, you want a cookie? I'm faithful. You, you want a cookie? 
I don't care because you're mad. I'm reading Bible. I, I've been going to church all year. You want a cookie? <laughs> Quiet in the building. I did that assignment you gave me. Do you want a cookie? Or feel a little pressure. Let's just keep reading. Let's just read the pressure away. He said, do what he think. Just follow me in the Bible. I don't make this up. Do what he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded him. Now, here go a biblical word. I trow not. But that word trow means think or believe. So Jesus was talking in hood talk. He said, I think not. <laughs> what are you saying? That you know you wouldn't do it. Don't even act like you would. Don't act like you're going to appreciate them for doing what they should have been doing anyways. Hey, I don't know where to walk. Can I buy you, man? You tell your kids to get up and clean the house. You don't, I hope you don't give them bonus. Y'all clean the house. Here go a bonus. They supposed to. Quiet in the building. I've been on time every day at my job. They don't owe you a bonus for being there. You're supposed to. Now, I know that sounds crazy, and I'm not trying to be deep. You can stare at me all you want to, but I'm going to tell you in love. This is the spirit in church right now. We feel like people owe us some great praise for doing what you're supposed to do anyway. And then if somebody don't call your name out, you can't hardly even stay in the service. Your mind just about shattered like a broken glass. I can't believe they didn't even look my way. They didn't even call me out. Then you make somebody else evil. They act like, wait a minute, did God tell you? They act like, oh, I'm in trouble. Hallelujah. Mm, I'm a preacher. I preach when it's hard and tough. Watch this. He said, dude, he thanked that servant because he didn't think that were commanded him. Now, you know the answer is no, ain't it? He said, I think not. So likewise, that word like mine, wise, is to say, so in comparison to. Or just like, just like that Lord, don't thank that servant for doing what he's supposed to do. He said, ye, tell somebody God's talking about me now. When you shall have done all those things. I hate coming back home being so quiet like this. Woo! Even at night in the regular house you hear crickets. He said, when ye shall have done all those things, which are, oh, no, go, no, read this one, because you think I'm throwing out. Hey, friend, I'm so excited that you have took this time to tune into our broadcast. It's always a great joy and a great privilege to be able to encourage God's people, whether it's through the word of God, whether it's through a miracle, a healing, or whether it's words of knowledge, words of prophecy that God may give us to be a blessing. We give all the praise to our great and wonderful God. And I'm so thankful that you've took this opportunity to allow us to minister into you.